Just under five years ago, on the 5th of October 2016, the Fun Pimps released one of Seven Days to Die's biggest content updates in the form of Alpha 15. We are going to be taking a look at Alpha 15 as a snapshot of Seven Days to Die's past and as a single keyframe in the development of this game and compare it to the game we know now. And wherever possible, I'm going to be comparing aspects of Alpha 15 to Alpha 20. But of course, this video was released before Alpha 20 was, so the results may vary in the end. With that said, this video is going to be quite a bit longer than my regular content, which was something you guys voted for. I wanted to split this video, you guys said no. So here we are. So feel free to watch it at your own pace and remember that that there are timestamps in the description and chapters along the play bar if you want to skip back and forth between points. We'll be covering seven main sections in this video, which I think are most important to Seven Days to Die and have changed the most in the past five years. Those are NPCs, combat, survival, progression, crafting, exploration, and the final section I'm calling superficial changes, which is graphics and sounds. I should preface this all by saying that I am not working from my memory nor the retellings of old Alpha 15 stories, but instead I did a full 7 days to die playthrough in Alpha 15 to really go as in depth as I had to to make all the notes I needed. So this is from my own recent, as in yesterday, recent experience. Just in case anyone thinks I'm just being nostalgic or forgetting certain things from the past. In places where Alpha 20 won't be changing anything, we'll just be comparing it to Alpha 19. Sound good? Well then I hope you enjoy the rest of the video and let's get started with section 1. NPCs NPCs stands for non-playable characters and in this context it covers zombies, traders and animals. I think a good place to start on this comparison would be the core of the Seven Days to Die experience, zombies. Now on the surface they do seem similar, walk at the player, punch them in the face. But the Alpha 15 AI had problems with pathfinding, regularly getting stuck on small obstacles and getting caught in loops, but nowadays the AI are considered too intelligent by a lot of players, with a common meme being that zombies have structural engineering degrees, as zombies are now excellent at calculating optimal paths to players, as well as quickly identifying weaknesses in the player's defensive position and targeting it for maximum destruction. Whereas the Alpha 15 zombies were much more dumb and prone to piling on top of each other and trying to singularly reach the player via close proximity unless an obvious door was available. Regardless of how detrimental that may be as a strategy, it is arguably more zombie-like. We've seen little to suggest the zombie AI is going to be changing drastically in Alpha 20, as all the AI improvements have been delayed to Alpha 21, so we're just comparing it to Alpha 19 in this context. From the AI calculations we don't see to something a bit more tangible and obvious to the player, enemy variety. Enemy variety in Alpha 15 wasn't particularly less than in Alpha 19, with one notable exception being the Demolition Zombie, which was added in Alpha 18. The Alpha 20 will be bringing the Gasser, which will operate similarly to the Cop with a spit attack, but also with a gas cloud attack. So it's safe to say Alpha 20 wins on enemy variation, but really, whether it uses those enemies to full effect remains to be seen. Whereas, Alpha 15, in my opinion, did a much better job than Alpha 19 of utilising its limited cast of enemies properly. One thing I really noticed on day 2 of my Alpha 15 playthrough was the much much higher frequency of screamer zombies. In Alpha 19 I can use an auger all night long and maybe one screamer will spawn, but in Alpha 15 it was as simple as using your campfire for too long. I actually really prefer the Alpha 15 screamer spawn rates because it meant that you would ever actually have to deal with them, usually a couple of times a day. Heat seems to be largely less of a prevalent issue in Alpha 19, meaning that having a defensible base outside of Horde Night is largely not needed. In Alpha 15 however I was making sure my doors and windows were reinforced from fear of these screamers, but in Alpha 19 I usually forget to close the door behind me because there's no danger. Of course, I can't mention Alpha 15 zombies and not mention the massive missing mechanic in the game, sleepers. Sleepers refers to the zombies that you see naturally spawning inside of POIs, but this mechanic was actually only introduced in Alpha 16. Back in Alpha 15 there weren't zombies inside of houses. We went out into the streets and fought the entire horde to gain control of the area and then go and safely loot all of the POIs. 
I enjoyed this fighting in the streets, but the introduction of sleepers does make looting arguably more challenging and less repetitive. It's a shame we couldn't keep the street hordes, but it seems largely to be a performance issue that resulted in them being removed, to keep the game from having to keep track of so many zombies at once. This game is getting more and more optimised, and I would love to see the street hordes re-implemented into Seven Days to Die. They were honestly the most fun and refreshing part of Alpha 15 for me. Another kind of NPC we do have in Alpha 15 was animals. Animals were definitely a work in progress in Alpha 15. We had the basics like the deer, the rabbit, the chicken. Instead of the boar, we had this weird pig-ish thing. When it comes to predatory animals, Alpha 15, however, is missing a lot. It has the bear, which lived in the forest and snow biomes, but the wolf, the dire wolf, the mountain lion, the snake, and the coyote were all noticeably absent in Alpha 15. I should also say that back in Alpha 15, we didn't have vultures, we had hornets. Just as annoying, but at least you could get honey from hornets. The final aspect of NPCs in Seven Days to Die is the traders. Now, traders were actually only added in Alpha 15, and they featured a different cast of traders. We still had Bob, who looked very different. We had Hugh, Joel, and Rex, again, all looking very different, but we didn't have Trader Jen at all. Trader Jen appears to have at some point in time replaced a trader called Jimmy. Unless... Now you can see that they all look different and were all found in different locations and that was gained from what we see now. Trading was just generally useless in Alpha 15 and to be fair that was the first update with trading so we have to give it a break there. But Everything was absurdly expensive, like 12,000 dukes for a level 100 hunting rifle is absurd. This was further highlighted by the notably missing quest system that was later added in Alpha 17. The traders were far from the game-breaking powerhouses they are in Alpha 19, with the exception of a few exploits here and there across the years, of course. I'm just gonna say it. Combat was way more fun in Alpha 15. The smell mechanic where carrying meat would attract zombies was a really fun way to make engagements feel more dynamic and large, as more and more zombies would be attracted to the fight by all the bacon you had stuffed on your belt. Smell was of course part of a larger mechanic, that being stealth. Stealth was very barebones in Alpha 15, having the simple indicator to show detection, and no skills or perks dedicated to it at all. A stealth build wasn't really a concept you could do in Alpha 15. Sneaking was just a tool available to you, that you were better off using where you could, but relying on it was generally a bad idea, what with not being able to really improve your character's ability in it in any way. One thing you could of course improve was your character's abilities in archery. Archery used to be a huge part of the meta in Seven Days to Die. I know that will be hard for some of you to believe, especially those of you who bought this game after Alpha 18 when the basic bow was nerfed into the floor to make way for the new wooden bow that nobody ever crafted and probably still hasn't to this day. In Alpha 15, you could reliably one-shot most zombies with a sneak attack as early as day one with the basic wooden bow and stone arrows. If you want to know just how strong and reliable archery was in Alpha 15, here's me using the basic bow in tandem with my actual firearms on the Day 7 Horde, because the bow did this weird thing where if you shot a zombie in the head, they would probably die. But there are ways to kill something other than with a bow, one of which is of course melee. First off, the range on melee attacks in Alpha 15 was massively reduced compared to what we have now, which is why bows were so heavily favoured back then. Secondly, there was absolutely no power attacks, so it could be really difficult to repel a zombie that had already closed the distance and stunned you, compared to Alpha 19 and presumably Alpha 20's massive sledgehammer and club meta, where every problem including the horde can just be solved by long arm power attacking zombies. Survival felt more important in Alpha 15 in my opinion. Rather than gaining health by levelling, this mechanic was controlled by a stat called Wellness. Going too long while dehydrated, starving or overheating or cold would lower your maximum health and stamina. This actually encouraged the player to care about these things, rather than in Alpha 19 where these things all boil down to essentially preventing a stamina debuff. To increase your wellness, you could take a lot of vitamins, as well as using a mechanic that has largely been forgotten in modern Seven Days to Die. Cooking. In Alpha 15, surviving off of canned food like most players do in Alpha 19 was actually a very bad idea. Canned food was not nutritious and it was usually dehydrating, and it was much rarer than it is now and it didn't increase wellness. However, home cooked meals would. This meant that hunting and cooking the best meals possible wasn't a role playing choice, it was a necessity for optimal survival. 
Keeping a healthy stock of foods was a huge boon to a player in Alpha 15 as it would allow you to increase your wellness and subsequently maximum health and stamina at the maximum rate, as you were limited by only being able to eat if you were actually hungry. Also, if you died in Alpha 15, you would actually lose 10 max health and stamina, so having access to high wellness foods would allow you to recover from a death faster, a death that actually mattered and affected your character. This need to keep on top of food in order to actually survive and improve your character facilitated another mechanic that has been royally nerfed into the floor since Alpha 15, farming. Farming was yet another necessity of survival in Alpha 15 that you almost needed to do to grow your character optimally, as complex dishes with lots of ingredients would increase your wellness to a greater extent, encouraging the player to learn new recipes, craft exotic foods and maximise their health gain to keep up with the game getting harder, and keeping your character in good health by not eating canned food or spamming certain healing items, and by maintaining a healthy temperature and drinking more refreshing drinks, was rewarded by having the best chances of surviving combat. Whereas in Alpha 19, there's next to no reason to eat better food aside from increasing stamina temporarily, and small amounts of healing. In Alpha 19, almost all of your problems can be solved by coffee for stamina regen and magic instant healing painkillers for health regen. In fact, a very interesting challenge idea for Alpha 19 would be to never actually eat anything and see if it actually affects your character in any meaningful way. Because even if hunger could kill you, your death would be completely meaningless as all it does is reduce your XP, and there is a limit to how much XP you can lose from this. To summarise, death actually mattered in Alpha 15. Keeping your character healthy and not living like a YouTuber making an 8000 word script for a video and living off of energy drinks and painkillers was actually encouraged by the wellness system. When it comes to survival, Alpha 15 takes Alpha 19 and, by extension, Alpha 20 out back and pounds them into a fine powder, and then it uses that powder as fertiliser for its actually worthwhile farming system that it then uses to improve its character faster. Also, Alpha 19, why do I need a recipe to figure out how to boil a piece of fucking meat. Alpha 15 lets you craft the food you would expect a human with above room temperature IQ to be able to make with the correct equipment. Bacon and eggs does not need a recipe. You heat the meat to an extent where the germs die and you do the same to the eggs. It doesn't take a degree. In Alpha 15 we had a classic 100 level skill system. You could level the skill by either actively doing the skill, like in Skyrim or Oblivion, or you could invest skill points like in the older Fallout games. Skill points came in at 5 points per level as opposed to the current one, more on that later. Of course, there wasn't just skills, we still had perks. Perks work similarly to how they do in Skyrim, where a certain perk would require a certain level of a skill to be obtainable, or in some cases it was dependent on player level. It's worth noting that the skills and perk system was actually unfinished in Alpha 15 with lots of skills not having been added to the game, same with perks. But I personally think this classic levelling system is a lot more engaging than the current one. Anyone who's played both Fallout 3 and Fallout 4 will already be familiar with this debate as it's essentially the same, which is better. 0 to 100 skills with occasional perks or just the perks on their own? Let me know down in the comments. Now I should mention that there's a lot more nuance to that debate in 7 Days to Die, because in 7 Days to Die Alpha 15 we had perks and level by doing skills, but in Alpha 19 we have perks, attributes and skill books, which on the surface seems more deep, but I have one simple reason as to why I prefer the old system. You would actually play how you played. I know, that doesn't make sense. Let me run it back at you. You would have to level the skills you needed so you would actively use them. Or from a more organic perspective, your playstyle would develop with the actions that you took. If you spent all day mining, you'd be a much better miner. But that would be time taken out your day you could have spent fighting and leveling your archery. Want to be better at construction tools so you can unlock the cement mixer? Well then you better get building, because that's the fastest way to increase your construction skill aside from wasting limited skill points on leveling the skill. But even that was a decision the player could make. Generally, in Alpha 15, you were encouraged to save your skill points for perks and level your skills naturally, but you did still have the option to brute force it using skill points at the cost of needing more levels to get that perk. Fortunately, you could kill zombies to level really quickly and force out the issue if you wanted to, just like how we already do in Alpha 19. You spam the shit out of building, trading and killing zombies to level, but when you level up in Alpha 19, you just pick what you want to do not what you've already been doing. The thing is, you could already do that in Alpha 15 by doing the power levelling and grinding levels, but you didn't have to do that. 
you had the option to play whatever way you wanted and the game would slowly tailor the experience to how you were playing. The issue there being, of course, that all that really effectively changed in the levelling system from Alpha 15 to 19 was we lost that natural path. Now the game actively encourages you to do 180s on character builds with stuff like the Forgetting Elixir. I despise the Forgetting Elixir because it's basically an item that, that was added to say, see all those bad decisions you made for this character build? Well you can just fix it nice and easily. In Alpha 15, if you fucked your character build by forgetting to level combat skills, you were punished by getting waffle stomped for being a shitlord. This is what most of us would call action and consequences, something Alpha 19 does not believe in. The Alpha 19 system also completely neuters replayability, I think. If you want to switch from a strength build, it's not a slow and painful experience of learning a new skill. Suffering under the strain of learning new things when your character is already so advanced, encouraging you to just restart and try a new playthrough for new builds, but in Alpha 19, you just drink some oopsie juice and completely rewrite the experience, genetics and memories of your character. Is this not supposed to be a survival role-playing game? Then why is poor character building and living off of Pop-Tarts and coffee not being punished in Alpha 19? Although I can't mention Alpha 15 progression without also mentioning The Thing. If you played Alpha 15, you probably know exactly what I'm talking about. In Alpha 15, there were crafting skills, and these would determine the quality of items you crafted, with Alpha 15 having 600 item levels rather than just 6 levels. With that, we could get marginally better tools or weapons every time we crafted them. What this led to was an entire player base for several years spamming the ever-loving shit out of stone shovels, or prior to Alpha 15, stone axes, to level toolsmithing, and just just constantly, constantly crafting new arrows so you could craft the best weapons. You see, if you were to craft 1000 stone arrows, you'd find yourself with a reasonably good weaponsmithing skill. And since you'd made 1000 stone arrows, and maybe had level 15 weaponsmithing, you could magically craft much higher tiers of weapons that were much harder to craft en masse, like iron sledgehammers. Or for example, crafting a billion stone shovels would allow you to craft level 600 steel pickaxes. This mechanic was completely and utterly abused by the player base throughout the early alphas of Seven Days to Die. And I feel like this abuse was the reason the fun pimps felt they needed to completely overhaul weapon crafting, more on that later, massively overhaul leveling and completely remove crafting perks and skills entirely. If true, I hate that decision, you could have just nerfed the amounts of XP you got from crafting things, and implemented another method of increasing crafting skills naturally, but still quickly. But instead, you not only threw out the baby with the bathwater, you threw the entire fucking bath out and hurled yourself out the window after it. I'm jumping in the middle of this video to add some much needed respite from all the info and let's be honest, a little bit of rage. And all I've really done is shake my fist at children and complain about how they have it too easy these days. But remember, I'm not operating from this on memory. This is what I experienced yesterday as of writing the script. This is what I got from a simple 10 hours of playtime in Alpha 15 while taking notes. And I most definitely don't just want to shit on Alpha 19, or especially Alpha 20 before it's even out, but these issues are shared by more than just me in the community. I love this game, but the issues are so glaring I can't ignore them. Hopefully though, this second half of the video can focus on some things that have gone right in the past 5 years. If you got this far in the video, hit that like button, and of course, if this is the kind of content you like, then hit that subscribe button. I usually make much shorter videos than this, but if this video does well, I will definitely make more like it. Anyway, let's get through the last three sections of this video. The first thing that needs to be mentioned about crafting is that there were no hotkeys in Alpha 15, and it was miserable. But that's mainly a quality of life feature, so I won't shit on Alpha 15 too much for it. Another aspect of crafting that was different from Alpha 19 though, was the old gun crafting system. You used to have to find each part of the gun, and find all usually 5 pieces of the gun, and then assemble them. This allowed you to replace weapon parts with higher quality ones to improve the overall quality of the weapon. This was slightly annoying though, because you needed to know how to craft a gun to be able to assemble it. Which meant that if you found a gun with ammo in it, you couldn't get the ammo 
ammo out and put it into a better gun. Because apparently the character couldn't figure out how to unload the magazine and take the bullets out. Quirks aside though, it was a fun enough system, but it did lead to a lot of fumbling around in menus which obviously didn't have hotkeys, and led to a lot of inventories being filled with random pieces of guns. Which doesn't sound too bad, but a lot of the pieces looked near identical. So if you had all the parts of a hunting rifle except the rifle parts, and then went to your storage container, you would have to sit and hover over all the parts to figure out which one was actually the hunting rifle parts. Honestly, as much as I enjoy this mechanic, it's no less enjoyable than Alpha 19's crafting system for me. In general, crafting was simpler in Alpha 15. For example, you just needed 5 leather to make a piece of leather armour, or some forged iron and wood to make a pickaxe. This was more enjoyable than whenever they decided everything in the game needed to be crafted with duct tape and leather, but it's probably more balanced now if we're being honest. Alpha 15 had not one, but two more biomes than Alpha 19. We had two separate forests, which were separated into the forest and the pine forest, which were later merged into one forest biome. And we had the plains, which was like a transition between desert and the forest, except it was nowhere near the desert on Navis game, they just stuck up next to the snow biome. And that means Alpha 15 will have had not two, but three more biomes than Alpha 20, because in Alpha 20, the burnt forest is being merged into the wasteland. So let's just go through that. In Alpha 15, we had the pine forest, the forest, the plains, the desert, the snow biome, the burn biome, and the wasteland biome. That's seven. In Alpha 20, we'll have the forest, the desert, the snow biome, and the wasteland. That's four. Now, let's be real here, most of these biome losses are from merging rather than outright removal, except the planes, which was actually just fucking nuked for some reason. So we haven't lost much, but it's hard to not feel annoyed at the simple fact that we had seven biomes five years ago, and when Alpha 20 comes out, we'll have four. But to be fair to Alpha 20, we will be getting the biome game stage modifiers, so exploration and going into other biomes will actually have a purpose now. And given that I said Alpha 15 used its enemies more effectively than Alpha 19 did, it would be hypocritical for me to not give the edge in biomes to Alpha 20, because it will actively use its smaller cast of biomes more effectively than any other update. It still doesn't explain why we lost the planes biome. I can't mention exploration and not mention Alpha 15's awful POIs. Honestly, the POIs were optional in Alpha 15. They were all ugly, poorly designed, there was nothing in them, there was a small cast of POIs, and they were not used effectively. Towns were essentially just two houses copy pasted everywhere, and cities were the same, with a few more bigger POIs like this absolutely cursed version of the hospital. I hate this. What is that? But Alpha 19's POIs were much more well made, diverse, and had a lot more reason to exist, what with sleepers and loot. And with Alpha 20 just adding even more of them, it's safe to assume that Alpha 20 is going to win out on POIs too. Also, while I'm on the topic of exploration, I don't know where else to kind of put this, but uh, airdrops used to be not completely worthless. Can we get that back please? Yeah, thanks. Alpha 15 looks okay. Alpha 19 looks good. Alpha 20 looks like it looks great. That is a good progression. No, but seriously, graphical quality has come far in the past five years, as well as performance. In Alpha 15, I got random drops in FPS despite running at 200 FPS most of the time. Alpha 19, however, runs completely smoothly for me. Although I do know that most people don't have that luxury, but given that I have an RTX 3070, 16 gigabytes of RAM, and a hexacore 4 point something gigahertz processor, I should not be getting frame drops in a five-year-old game, which I was in Alpha 15. And yes, I was running it from the SSD before someone asks. As for visuals, not necessarily related to graphics, but more so art style, the zombies, the traders, the animals, the blocks, the weapons, everything looks better in Alpha 19. And given that Alpha 20 is going to be completing that HD transition by adding a million new weapon textures and zombie skins, it's safe to assume Alpha 20 will obviously wipe the floor with Alpha 15 visually. And for sound design, I have to give it to Alpha 19 again. Now, I enjoy the ambient sounds and music more in Alpha 15, they were more subtle and creative. Honestly, all the combat music in Alpha 19 sounds like Tesco value, Fallout 4 combat music, for you Americans that's like Walmart value I guess, and it annoys me so much that I play with it completely disabled. But the reason Alpha 19 wins despite that is the weapons, the zombies and the tools. The zombie sound in Alpha 15 is awful. 
The audio tracks for their moans and groans are absurdly loud and just generally poorly made, and in Alpha 19 in general the guns sound less crackly and low quality compared to Alpha 15, and all the tools in Alpha 19 sound distinct and crisp. Good job, fun pimps. This video might feel like it goes a little hard against 7 Days to Die Alpha 19 and Alpha 20, but remember that my 7 sections don't cover everything in the game. Alpha 15 was still missing a lot of weapons and content, and it was buggy as hell and the performance was abysmal, but it's not hard to look at what the devs were trying to do and compare it to what the devs have done since then and think that Alpha 15 with the polish and content of Alpha 19 would be a more fun game, at least for me. Alpha 19 really does feel like Fallout 4 with zombies and no story, but Alpha 15 feels like 7 days to die. The game seems to have swung back into its safe Fallout influences, copying a lot of what Fallout 4 did, and now in Alpha 20 we're getting pipe guns and radiation survival and a bigger focus on building, and then in Alpha 21 we're getting the dreaded armour and clothing overhaul which feels a lot like Bethesda's other big RPG than 7 Days to Die. 7 Days to Die Alpha 19 feels like a streamlined sequel to Alpha 15 rather than a continually developed addition to it. The complete 180 in game direction from survival RPG to RPG with survival elements is pretty obvious and in my opinion at least damaging to the game. All that said, Alpha 15 was 5 years ago. We'll never get to see the end of that branch, the closest we have is Alpha 16. As a result, I'm still excited for Alpha 20, and seeing where 7 Days to Die goes from here. But if you ask me which branch of 7 Days to Die I would rather see the finished version of, the Alpha 15 16 version with a survival focus and that rich progression would be the one that I would want to play. What about you? Do you prefer the more streamlined systems the game has now? Do you like the old one better? Are you still excited for 7 Days to Die Alpha 20? Let me know down in the comments and remember to subscribe while you're down there. This video was a huge project and I'm really glad I got to dive deep into the topic and share my findings with you guys, even if I got a little heated in the middle there. Regardless, I hope you did enjoy this very long video and if you reached the end, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you, I hit my microphone, in the next video.